How would I invest £2,000? If you've got £2,000 in the bank and you're wanting to get into property, what do you do? I think the first thing is to just admit and accept that you're broke because £2,000, that isn't even going to pay for stamp duty. So do we end the video there? Is that it? Save more money, work hard. No, you can do loads with £2,000 if you have the knowledge. So what do you do? Well, first thing is this. Don't work hard, save up money and buy a house because that is too long and too slow. The average house is about £300,000. A deposit on an average house as a buy to let is going to be 75 grand plus stamp duty, plus legal fees, plus paying your mortgage broker, best part of 100 grand just to buy a house. And the average house rents out for a thousand pounds a month. First thing you need to do is this. Change your mind and understand how the power of modern business works. Modern businesses, the biggest companies and the most successful companies in the world, understand the power of being the middleman rather than the owner. They're the owner of the company, the owner of the software, the owner of the concept, but not necessarily the owner of the property. What's the biggest company in the world? The biggest online retailer in the world, Amazon. What do, what do they do? They're the middleman. If I write, write a book and then get the cover done and, and put it on Amazon, Amazon are taking a big percentage of the profit, but what are they doing? They're not writing the book. What they're doing is they're selling the book. They're the middle person in between the buyer and the seller, taking a big chunk of money, biggest company in the world. With that being said, can you do that at property? And the answer is yes. How do you grow and scale a property company? Well, what I do and what many companies do, like Premier Inn, they don't buy their hotels. What they do is they rent them and then they rent them out for a higher amount. Let me tell you a story. I went to uh, Manchester recently. Normally when I go to Manchester, my PA, my personal assistant, books me a hotel in advance, but this was a spontaneous trip. So as I was driving to Manchester, I was thinking, damn, I ain't got a hotel booked. Oh, well, I'll figure it out. There's loads of hotels in Manchester. Had my meeting, meeting finished at 8 p.m. And I thought, right, I'm gonna now crash and I'll leave in the morning. Went online, couldn't find any hotels in the whole of Manchester city that were available to book. All the hotels fully booked. In the end, I had to go to Wigan to stay at a hotel. Nothing in Manchester. So when I woke up the next day, I was looking in Manchester, in the same areas of all these fully booked hotels, I was looking at apartments with estate agents. Thousands of apartments for rent. So when I'm in bed in Wigan, I'm just looking at all these properties, thinking tomorrow morning, I'm gonna phone some of these up. What did I do? Next morning, went into a letting agent and I said to her, I'm looking to rent an apartment. What you got for me? Studio apartments, fine. I'm looking for about a grand. And she says, oh, a grand, it's on the low side. We've got this for 11, we've got this for 1200, we've got this. She starts showing me good stuff. As I'm chatting with her, building rapport, she likes me, of course. I like her, everything's wonderful. I said to her, I said, I'll come down to Manchester quite often and I can never get hotels. And she's, she's showing me stuff. Yeah, this could work, this could work. I said, by the way, I said, obviously I'm not in Manchester all the time. So when I'm not here, if possible, I'd like to be able to have people stay in, host people in the property. So I slowly kind of explained to what I'm doing. She ends up showing me three properties. She called me later that afternoon. She says, unfortunately, one of the landlords says no, but the other two are open to it. I said, cool, I'll take both properties. I'll take those two. So she, she ends up renting two properties to me in Manchester. So how much do I need to pay up front? Well, if I just took one, as it happens, I took two, but if I just took one, I'm gonna need to pay maybe a deposit, maybe a month up front rent. It's already fully furnished. So it's about two grand, isn't it? That two grand would get me nowhere in the property world. But now I've got an apartment. I got two. Those two properties that I've had now for years make around about two grand a month. So if you've got two grand, go get one of those. Now, obviously, you need to know what to do and how it works. I mean, I do this on much bigger. That's tiny. I, I got one in uh, Buxton in the Peak District. Worked so well, I ended up buying a hotel in Buxton. So if you've got two grand, what do you do with it? You rent a property and then you get permission from the owner or the agent to rent it out for a much higher amount, whether you're doing that using service accommodation on booking.com, Airbnb, whether you're doing that by renting out as a HMO, whether you're doing that by renting out to a housing association that operate in assisted living. That's what I would do. Instead of trying to save up and buy a property, I would control a property that gives me good cash flow. That's what I would do. What are your thoughts? 
Let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.